This video is going to show how to create a custom component in PSOC Creator. The component I want to create uh, is a basic pulse extender. Uh, what I want the output to do is to uh, track trigger, go high when trigger goes high, but then stay on a little bit longer. And here's two other cases in how it should behave. If uh, trigger is uh, pulsing up and down, uh, output should stay high. Uh, through all of them and then go low that same duration. Um, this assumes that um, the off time is shorter than the uh, T time. And in this case, here's a really long pulse. Um, and output will track that and then have the uh, additional time extended onto it. So I'm going to go into PSA Creator and create a new project. I'm going to uh, target this project at the CY8C kit-059 uh, demo board, which uh, uses the PSOC 5. You can start with an empty schematic, give it a name. Uh, Paul CXT. So normally you have all these components in a catalog that you can use. Um, and uh, in the digital, the digital section logic, uh, there's a lot of them, but there's nothing uh, that will work like the pulse extender. So we want to create our own. To do that, we go over to the components tab, right click, and say add component item. We're going to use the symbol wizard to get us started on this. I'll give it a name. Click Create New. Now here's where I add my terminals. Uh, I'm going to need uh, two inputs and one output. So the first input is a trigger. Second is a clock. And the output, I'll call the traditional Q, is assigned there. So I'm going to change the title color to be digital and give it A label. So we have that um, started. Next thing we need to do is add an adjustable parameter for that uh, time duration we want to extend the pulse. So I right click on the background, click symbol parameters, and then I add one. I'll call it duration, give it a int 8 type, give it a default of 10. I also want to go over here and um, change two properties. One, I want to change hardware to true. That'll give me access uh, in my Verilog um, to that value. And then I'll add a validator. In this case, I'll say dollar duration uh, must be less than 255. And must be greater than zero. Okay. So now I have the basic uh, setup done. Now I want to generate the Verilog for that. Right click on the background again and click Generate Verilog. There's some uh, things you can change, but in this case, uh, I'm going to leave everything with the defaults. And here's my uh, basic Verilog template. There's no real code in here yet, um, but all my input outputs and parameters are there. First thing I need to change is Q to a register because I'm going to change it within the body of the Verilog. Um, the next thing is I want to add a register. for a counter. Okay, then I put my bear log in here. And what I want to do is always um, do something whenever a clock or input is high. So
whenever a positive edge and trigger or positive edge on clock. If trigger is high, I always want the output to be high. And I want to reset the count to zero. This effectively resets the count whenever trigger is high. Another case is if count does not equal duration. In that case, I want to, um, since trigger is not high, I want to start counting up on the counter. In the third case, is neither of those are true. And at that point, I always want to set Q to low. So that's it for the Verilog. I can save that. Build the application. That looks like it was good. So now when I go back to my uh, project schematic, I can see that I now have a new tab um, in default with my pulse extender. So I can drop that onto my schematic. And if I double click it, I'll see the duration there. I'm going to leave that as the default value. Now on the dev board I have, there is a, a switch and an LED that I can use to test this. So first thing I want to do is add a clock and this will be the thing that um, adjusts my counter. Well, I'm going to set that to about 10 hertz. So since my count, my duration is 10 and it's 10 hertz, it will uh, extend the pulse by about a second. Now I'll add a digital input for the switch. The switch on the dev board switches to ground, so when I push the button, it's going to be a low pulse. So I will add a not there to flip that. And I'll make that uh, a pull up so that it goes high when it's not being pushed. Now I'll add an output for the LED. That should work. So now I need to 
set the pins. The LED is on 2, 1. And the switch is on 2, 2. Okay, I'm going to build that. See how that works. A syntax error. Uh, that should be uh, else if. Let's see how that works. That looks good. I'm going to program the board. That looks good. Now I'm going to push the button. The LED goes off after a second. I'll push it rapidly. The LED is staying on and then holds on for a while after I let go. And then I'll do a long push. Let go. And the LED goes off. So it looks like it worked out really well. So just like any other device, um, you can put as many of these on as you want. You could share the clock between them. You could do a bunch of uh, other things that are normal to PSAC. Uh, I think that's it. Thanks for watching.